The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Uh. <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by The Kraft Foods Company, makers of a complete line of famous quality food products. Well, let's see what's going on at the great Gildersleeve's house. <laughs> Sounds like the wrong house, but it's not. It's a pajama party. The fact is, Gildersleeve's niece, Marjorie, is entertaining three of her most intimate girlfriends overnight tonight, and the whole gang has just finished supper. Hey, girls, you want to see a card trick? No, Leroy. Let me remind you, Leroy, that this is not our party. It's Marjorie's. I'm trying to help entertain. This is strictly for girls, my boy. You and I aren't even supposed to be here. Oh, I got a new trick that's a pip. Where are the cards, Marge? How would I know? Let me tell you about this character. I was walking down the corridor. I think I left him in my raincoat pocket. Well, anyway, I was just walking down the corridor, minding my own business, when this character popped out of Miss Turley's room. And what do you think he said to me? You'll never believe it. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I don't believe it. He couldn't. I'm telling you, that's part of the character we're getting for trouble. Don't you think so, Francis? Oh, absolutely. How do they do it? <laughs> eh, girls, what's so strange about somebody saying good morning? Oh, I couldn't possibly explain it to you, Anki. But if you could see this car... <laughs> <laughs> okay, ladies, if you'll give me your attention, please. Yes, Leroy, must you always be showing off? Who's well, showing off? I'm just doing a card trick. Uh, take a card, Mary Louise, any card at all. Oh, look out, he's trying to make you take a certain one, then he'll know. Any card at all. Leroy, the girls didn't come over here to see you do card tricks. Oh, but if the... Say, Marjorie, do you know the name of that boy that sits next to Clubby Travis in history? Oh, sure, his name is Al. He's cute, isn't he? Oh, do you think so? Clubby says he's an awful drill. Well, how would Clubby know? I mean, after all, he's... <laughs> oh, friends are your two. Um, Mary Louise, take a card, will you? Leroy. Uncle Mort, isn't it time for Leroy to be in bed? Yes, by George, it is. Leroy, 8.30, off to Bilo. Oh, Unc, it's Friday night. You still need your sleep, Leroy. But the girls want to see some card tricks. <laughs> your health comes first, Leroy. Perhaps you can do a few tricks to the girls in the morning. Now beat it. Gosh, every time I'm having a good time. Good night, my boy. Good night, Leroy. Good night. Good night, good night, good night Leroy. Good night. Good night. Say, girls... What's on the radio, Marjorie? I don't know. What time is it? Francie, have you ever seen my imitation of a hummingbird in flight? <laughs> it's around 8.30. There must be some music on somewhere. What'd you say, Mr. Gildersleeve? I'll try it. Girls, listen. Did I ever tell you the story of the absent-minded college professor and the tomcat? This professor was very absent-minded, and one day he... What station is Clark Spielman's orchestra? It's about in the middle. One day he was about to walk into his classroom, and he suddenly remembered he'd forgotten to feed his cat. I think I got it. it... He remembered he'd forgotten to feed his cat. The cat was at home, and of course he was late, so... Girls! Unky, please! Well, anyway, in the end, the professor kicks his toothbrush out of the house and brushes his teeth with a cat. Uncle Mark, we're trying to listen to the music. Oh, music. Well, that's not a bad little orchestra. I like jazz when it's well done. Mm hmm Garden of Eden... Just made for two, with nothing to mar our joy. Uncle Mort. There would be such wonderful things to do. I would say such wonderful things to you. Is he kidding? If you were the only girl in the world, and I were the only <laughs> Uncle Mort, would you come out in the hall a minute, please? Uh, me? Hall? What's the matter? Anki, why don't you go out somewhere? We can't have any fun while you're here. I was going in a minute. I didn't know you were in such a big hurry. Oh, now, don't take it that way, please, Anki. I'm merely trying to entertain your little friends, my dear. If my humble efforts are not pleasing, you only have to say so. Anki, that's not it. Not exactly. Say no more. Say no more. Uh, uh, ladies, I regret that a previous engagement has to...
tear me away from you. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, must you go? I must. Good night, ladies. Good night, Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Get my hat. Again, I say, good night. Wonder what they're laughing at. still on up there in Marjorie's room. They've got no business being up at this hour. Darn kids. I don't understand this generation. Haven't they got enough sense to go to bed? Well, I have. <laughs> Themes. Things seem pretty quiet. Oh, my goodness. Mr. Gillsleeve, is that you? Huh? It, yes, Bertie, it's me. It, has this racket been going on all evening? Yes, sir. I thought they'd quiet down when they went to bed, but I was wrong. Yes, sir, I was really wrong. Uh, have you tried to quiet them, Bertie? No, sir, I haven't. Leroy tried once. What happened? I don't know exactly, but it sounded like a massacre. After that, he locked his door. Hmm. Guess I won't try it. Maybe I'll just... How am I going to get any sleep? I thought about that, Mr. Gillsleeve, so I made up the cot in your study. It, in my study? That's the worst bed in the house, Bertie. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, but I'll sleep in it. <laughs> Good night, Bertie. <laughs> Try to go to sleep, I guess. Oh, brother, what a bed. Zeef. <laughs> By George. Kicking me out of my own house. My own flesh and blood. Keeping little Leroy awake. Keeping me awake. <laughs> Why are they so quiet all of a sudden? I don't trust a bunch of girls together. Mighty funny. All of a sudden, they're quiet. <laughs> Sleep. Uncle Mort. Jim, what's it for? <laughs> Unky, wake up. It's almost noon. Unky, it's a quarter of twelve. Did it a quarter of twelve? What day is it? <laughs> it's Saturday. The girls are all gone. Don't you want some breakfast? Sure. Guess so. <laughs> I'm sorry if we drove you out of the house last night, Unky. What? Oh, yes. Well, if you feel your old uncle is a nuisance. Oh, it wasn't that, Anki. But the girls wouldn't talk while you were around. They did nothing but talk. Jabber, jabber, jabber. All at once. Oh, well, that stuff. But we couldn't tell any secrets while you were there, and that's the only fun. Secrets? Can you imagine what Francie tried to tell us? She claims she's engaged. Francie engaged at her age? It's a secret engagement, according to her. I'll bet it is. That's the silliest thing I ever heard of. Francie engaged. She's only known the boy for two months, for heaven's sake. Why, I've known Ben for four years. No, Marjorie. Do you know what she had the nerve to imply? 
She implied that I couldn't get engaged if I wanted to. Just because Ben and I have been going together for so long. Now, don't you be getting any ideas. For heaven's sake, what's so hard about getting engaged? All you have to do is play your cards right. Marjorie, really? Who does she think she is, anyway? I think it'd serve her good and right if somebody showed her up. Now, see here, young lady, you listen to me. What? If this is the kind of ideas you get, there'll be no more pajama parties. Well, I'm not going to let Francie make a fool out of me. I'm not going to let you make a fool of yourself. Oh! Gee, uh, Marjorie, come back here. Oh, Oh, confound it, how do you get out of this thing? Tonight we have some of the best news for you you've heard in a long time. An old friend of yours is back on your grocer's shelf, or will be very soon. Yes, it's famous Kraft Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise. Now that the supply of fine salad oil is becoming more plentiful, Kraft can once again make this superior mayonnaise. Not as much as we'd like, of course, but a reasonable quantity. And we're more than pleased to tell you about it. Kraft Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise, you know, is mayonnaise with a piquant, homemade flavor. A delicate, just-right flavor that comes from the choice ingredients that go into it. For Kraft mayonnaise is made from fine oil and eggs, fragrant vinegar and spices. Then, as a final crowning touch, fresh lemon juice is added. Its texture, too, is superb. A special patented beater exclusive with Kraft gives Kraft kitchen fresh mayonnaise a velvety smoothness, nothing short of perfection. In every respect, Kraft mayonnaise measures up to the most exacting standards. We know you'll enjoy it. And incidentally, another famous craft product, Miracle Whip Salad Dressing, remains in short supply. We're sorry, but until more sugar is available, Miracle Whip will continue to be rather scarce. Now we return to the great Gildersleeve. There has been an atmosphere of tension about the Gildersleeve household this evening. Gildersleeve has watched in silence while Marjorie made preparations to receive a gentleman caller. He pretended to read his paper while she selected phonograph records and laid them carefully beside the machine. He let her pull the couch closer to the fire. He made no comment when she turned the bridge lamp low. But after dinner, she came sweeping downstairs dressed to kill. Well... Marjorie, may I ask what the devil you imagine you're dressed up for? Holy cats, get a load of Cleopatra. Marjorie, your uncle asked you a question. Hey, what have you done to your eyes? Yes, what have you done to them? What is that stuff? It's merely a little simple eye shadow. I fail to see why there should be all this fuss about... Eye shadow? Now, see here. Oh, Uncle Mort. No nice girl uses eye shadow. And no nice boy would go out with a girl who does. I fail to see why using eyeshadow is any worse than using lipstick. I have forbidden you to use lipstick repeatedly. She still does, though. Oh, mind your business. Is this true, my dear? Are you using lipstick? Well, what's the harm if you haven't even noticed? So, you deliberately disobey my orders. Uncle Mort, I am not going to look ridiculous for anybody. You look ridiculous right now. That dress, where did you get that? This just happens to be a dress that you bought me yourself. I never bought you any dress like that. With those shoulders. They're elastic. You just pull them up or pull them down. Well, pull them up. <laughs> really? I never bought that dress anyway. Marjorie, I don't know what's gotten into you. She thinks she's Lana Turner. You... Oh, go away. Why, a nice boy like Ben, if he could see you like this, he'd be horrified. You want to bet? Yep. <laughs> I'm not going to argue. Go upstairs and change your clothes. Did you hear me? Go upstairs and change your clothes. Leroy, leave the room. I will remind you, my dear, that I am still your uncle. Well, let me remind you, Uncle Mort, that I am not a baby. You never looked more like one in your life. You look like some child dressed up in her mother's clothes. Now go upstairs and take off that ridiculous outfit and take a washcloth and... Ben! It's Ben! Oh, boy, wait! Leroy, wait! Wait, Leroy. Well, my dear, are you going to... Uncle Mort, it's too late. It's not too late. You've never hesitated to keep him waiting before. I'll entertain him while you're changing. Well, are you going to do as I tell you? Oh, why do you always have to ruin everything? 
Every time I try to do anything or have any fun, you always have to ruin it. Now, that's not true. All right, Leroy. You can open the door. Hi, Ben. Well, uh, come in, Ben. Hello, Leroy. Hi, Mr. Gildersleeve. Come in, my boy. Come in. Oh, thanks. Is Marge around? I thought she was expecting me. Boy, is she ever expecting you. You ought to see it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, she's around. <laughs> yeah, she'll be down in a moment. Leroy, I think it's your bedtime. School tomorrow, you know. Oh, for corn's sake, all I ever get is sent to bed. Why don't you ever make money? Leroy, go this instant. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. These little disciplinary measures are sometimes necessary. I know. Uh, good night, Leroy. Good night. You don't mind my saying good night to him? No, no, no. Of course not. <laughs> I always make a point of saying it myself. Good night, Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, children, let's go into the living room, shall we? Yes, Ben, you'll be having children of your own someday. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> Sit down. Thanks. Ben, I'd like to have a little talk with you. All right, sir. When? Well, right now, if you're not doing anything. Just waiting for Marge. Well. Well, that's good. Um, ben? You sure she's expecting me? Oh, yes, she's expecting you, all right. I thought from the way she talked on the phone, it sounded like she had something on her mind. That's just it. Ben? Yes, sir? I, uh, I don't know how much you know about women, Ben. Well, isn't much. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you know that much. Uh, Marjorie is just a girl, of course, Ben. But uh, she's at the age where she's becoming a woman. You must always bear that in mind. Oh, I do. <laughs> and as a girl becomes a woman, Ben, she tends to think more and more of uh, men. I guess it works both ways. <laughs> exactly. Now, uh, Marjorie is a girl, as I say, and uh, girls sometimes get ideas that are too big for them. I mean, uh, they get a little ahead of themselves. You know? No, sir. You don't? <laughs> well, uh, what I'm trying to say, Ben, a girl like Marjorie gets notions sometimes, and... Uh, 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 quiet. Here she comes. Marge? Yeah, I heard her door open upstairs. Don't let her know what we were talking about. Oh, gosh, I don't know. <laughs> hey, come on, let's go out in the hall. Well, my dear, it's about... Well... Hello, Marsh. Gosh. Now she's wearing earrings just to make me mad. I tell you, Peavy, the girl is getting out of hand. Why, well, it's got so now if any friend of hers turns up, the first thing she does is shove me out of the door. Pretty soon I won't have any place to stay. Oh, I imagine Marjorie is really very fond of you, Mr. Gillespie. It's uh, just that she's at a difficult age. Yeah, she sure is. Uh, we're all at a difficult age, I guess. I, I'm perfectly willing to admit that I'm not the soul of reason at all times, but then neither is she. Who? Uh, Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> Who's talking about Mrs. Peavy? Oh, I'm sorry, I guess my mind wandered there for a little. What were we talking? Oh, yes. Your niece. Hmm. Marjorie. Glad you remember her name. <laughs> well, uh, what about Marjorie? I've just been telling you. Peavy, I don't believe you listen to half of what I say. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I only hope you follow your prescriptions more closely than you follow a conversation. <laughs> well, Mr. Gildersleeve, a prescription is a matter of life and death. But some of the conversation I have to listen to... Well... Oh, uh, not yours. I... Oh, you're always welcome here, Mr. Gildersleeve. 
In fact, I, I always look forward to your dropping in as one of the bright spots in my day. That's the kind of a day I have. <laughs> well, that's a nice remark. Oh, I, I don't know what's the matter with me today, Mr. Gildersleeve. I, I guess it's just that I have problems. You have problems. You ought to hear about my problems. I thought I had. <laughs> Did you ever have a niece who set out in cold blood to get herself engaged? When you tried to reason with her, she kicked you out of the house? No, Mr. Gildersleeve, I can't say that I ever did. Well, don't talk to me about problems. And did you ever have a wife want to take you for, to the picture show? And she's been after me for a week now. After all, I'm the girl's guardian. I think I have a right to a little respect. What in the world she wants to see the thing for? To each his own. <laughs> I understand it's a sad picture. Just hope she isn't making a fool of herself with Ben, that's all. I don't know if I could stand this sad picture this week. Not worried about Ben, particularly. He's a nice boy, but Marjorie... Uh, by the way, how is Marjorie? She's fine. <laughs> Maybe I'll just stay home and send the old girl to the pictures by herself. <laughs> Never should have left her alone with him. Never should have left the house. I'd give anything to know what's going on over there. I'd give a million dollars just to see what she's up to. Oh, I love Rimsky Korsakov, don't you? Is that what it is? Song of India, Rimsky Korsakov. Hey. You ought to be on information, please. He also wrote Scheherazade. He was Russian. Oh. I love all his music. It has so much color. So much what? Never mind. I like to lie back and just let the melody take me in its arms. Why don't you lie back too, Ben? Oh, I'm perfectly comfortable. But you seem so stiff. Relax. I'm relaxed. Oh, Ben, relax. <laughs> there, that's better, isn't it? Sure. <laughs> Anything you say, Marsh. Ben. Oh, there's the record. Oh, don't get up. But, but the record, that's the end. Well, let it go. It'll turn itself off. Well, it isn't doing it. Look, I better... Ben, let it go. You want to wear out your record? I don't care about the record, Ben. Oh, okay. It's your record. Ben. Something wrong with that automatic, though. Yeah. Ben, why have you been the way you've been this evening? What way have I been? The way you've been. I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. You've seen sort of on your guard all evening. I have? Yes. Ben, don't you like me anymore? Like you? Gosh. Well, then, why do you act so strange? I don't know. I guess I'm kind of buffaloed or something. Why? Well, you're different tonight, Marge. You've changed. Don't you like it? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm being careful. Well, careful of what? Well, if I'm not careful, I might try and kiss you or something. Would that be so terrible? Well, I know a lot of fellas go around kissing girls, but I don't do that way. If I kiss a girl, that means we're engaged practically. Go ahead and laugh if you want to. I don't feel like laughing, Ben. I feel like crying. What for? Oh, Ben! Hey! Marge, I... I'd better go turn off that machine. Don't worry. I won't ask you to kiss me. Huh? Oh, there's somebody at the front door, Marge. Your uncle, probably. Well, you needn't jump. Goodness knows you haven't done anything. Hey! What's the idea? Where are you going? Say goodnight to Uncle Mort for me. And tell him he needn't worry. I couldn't have been in safer hands. I don't get it. What did I do? Well, anyway, good night. Oh, hi, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Marjorie gone upstairs, has she? Yeah. Wanted to leave you alone with me, I suppose. I suppose so. I don't know. I don't know what's been going on here, but I think you might at least have turned off the phonograph. Well, I meant to tell you it's busted. <laughs> the automatic, I mean. I'm not blaming you, Ben. It's Marjorie. She's very careless about certain things. You might as well know that. Yes, sir. Well, let's go into my study. 
Get this thing over. I suppose you have something you want to ask me. Ask you? Well, Ben? Hi. <laughs> Sit down, my boy. I'll try to make this easy for you. Easy? Ben, don't ever have a niece. No, sir. I'll try not to. Well, let's get to the point. Now, I have nothing against you, Ben. You've always been welcome around here. Always glad to have you around. Well, thanks. But you must realize, Marjorie is still young yet. Oh, I know she's been after you all evening to get engaged. Uh, Girls get those Is that what she was after? Well, didn't she... uh, Didn't you... Oh, boy, was I dumb. Ben! Gee, thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve. Thanks for the tip. Wait, Ben. Hey, Marge! Marge, come down, will you? Please, I want to talk to you. I want to ask you something. Son of a gun, why can't I ever keep my big mouth shut? We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again very shortly. Sweet music to your ears and ours is the news that Kraft Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise is once again available in reasonable quantity. Yes, some shipments of this famous product, Kraft Mayonnaise, are going out to food dealers all over the country. And if you've not yet seen a small supply at your grocers, you probably will very soon. Kraft Mayonnaise, you know, is the superb mayonnaise that glorifies every salad. Vegetable, fruit, or the main dish variety. For Kraft, kitchen fresh mayonnaise has the delicacy and richness that only really choice ingredients can give. Fine salad oil, selected eggs, fragrant vinegar and spices, and for piquant flavor, fresh lemon juice. Its texture is exquisite, too. Blended to surpassing smoothness in a special beater patented by Kraft. You'll never again bother to make your own once you try Kraft... Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise. And by the way, Miracle Whip, another famous craft product, is still rather scarce. The shortage of sugar continues to limit its production. Good night, Ben. Good night. Marjorie. Well? Well? I suppose you were listening to every word we said. I did nothing of the kind. But I think I have a right to know what's going on here. Marjorie, did Ben... Did he... Naturally. I said he would, didn't I? Now, listen here. I'm your guardian, and there'll be no engagements around here without my permission. So you can just call it off. Who said I was engaged? But you... You just said that Ben... I told Ben I couldn't possibly think of getting married for at least ten years. After leading him on like that? Marjorie, I don't understand you. I'm going to have a career first. I'm not like Francie. Oh, that's all. Well, and what career have you chosen, my dear? I'm going to be a model. A model? So is Mary Louise, and so is Kay. We all decided we're going to be models. Listen, we'll have no more pajama parties here, understand? Now go to bed. I ask you folks, what gets into girls? Now, Marjorie makes a lot of sense by herself. Nice girl, too. When she gets two or three of her friends, I ask you. Well, good night. The Great Gilded Slave is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekham. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley as Leroy, Louise Erickson as Marjorie, and Lillian Randolph as Bertie. Dick LeGrand plays Mr. Peavy. This is John Lang saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Plenty of rich, velvety smooth ice cream. Any flavor you like always on hand. Sound swell? It is, and so easy to enjoy when you buy the new Kraft product called Frizz. F-R-I-Z-Z. Yes, Frizz makes delicious homemade ice cream right in your refrigerator. Real ice cream with plenty of milk and cream in it. Just add water, a little sugar, and freeze according to directions on the package. Made by an exclusive process that retains that fresh cream flavor, it freezes smoothly, gives you six generous servings from one package of Frizz. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.